And then uh, call on Councilman Franco for a prayer. Everybody stand, please. This time I'd like to take a moment of silence uh, for lost tribal members in the past, uh, Bob Van Guten, Dick Flesh, and uh, Denise, Mas uh, Denise Mackey. So we can have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Uh, Lord, Creator, I ask you to look over us today as we gather. Uh, give the council wisdom, uh, compassion, and insight as we continue to further the tribe as we move forward. Uh, please answer each and every person here's prayers, requests for their individual friends, families. Ask that they make it home to their destinations safely. Uh, thank you for coming here and I ask the Creator to give us peace and happiness. Miigwech. Miigwech. Okay, we have a roll call. Gerald Gray. Here. Clark Sievertson. Here. Richard Bronto. Here. Leona Kienberger. Here. Donnie Davis. Here. Colleen Hill. Absent. Lola Fredrickson. Here. Okay. No, we have uh, enough members here, or council members for a quorum. We'll have uh, the reading of uh, previous minutes. You're up. <coughs> the opening prayer was done by Richard Caranto. There was a flag song by Kyle Spearson and the flag bearer for Al Weisman and Larry Saloy. Called to order by Chairman Gray. Roll call of uh, council members, and all members were present and informed to conduct business. Um, there was a reading of the previous minutes, and we were approved. Um, <coughs> Clarence Sievertson made a motion to accept the minutes as read and seconded by Richard Caranto. The treasurer report was given by Colleen Hill. Uh, she is uh, doing the accounting for the tribal funds. All the bills, she stated all the bills are current. She sent letters to vendors that only approved items by the council will be paid. In the general fund, there was 865.70. In the tobacco account, the balance was 1,333.73. In the tribal savings account, there was 20,102.73. Motion to accept was by uh, Leona Kienenberger, seconded by Luella Fredrickson. Uh, Chairman Gray reported the legislature is proposing to cut the ICE fund <coughs> grant funding in half. Uh, the ICE fund helped by our visitor center at Stucky Road. The tribe is getting uh, prices to order new flags. With requests that have come in, we are thinking of ordering 25 to 35 flags. They will be a notice when they are available for purchase by members. And also, we may order some hotels that should be bring in some additional funding. We are working on a new election ordinance so that it will be in effect before the next elections. The tribe is looking at buying some computers and setting up a community system, probably at our visitor center. Members can go there to get on the access for personal needs, such as uh, resumes and such. We are looking at a program for a tribal health coordinator and that meeting is in, was in Billings on February the 8th. Uh, federal rec recognition report by Chairman Gray. After the elections, the Congress went into a lame duck session and they, they had to fix the fiscal plus cliff issues. Senator Te Tester has introduced our federal recognition bill to the new legislature. It is now Senate Bill 161. Uh, it may get attached with a bill from the Lumbee tribe who have also <coughs> requested federal recognition. Uh, on enrollment, uh, Pat Mackey was able to attend that day, and uh, they've been very busy with the Indian Trust members, or Indian Trust settlement with members wanting their IIM numbers, but the tribe does not have this information, and uh, there were no enrollments that day. 
on the cultural activities. Richard Serrano uh, had a teepee set up outside the Moose Lodge building by members. Uh, Richard would like to have some cultural activities at each quarterly meeting. He stated we have the equipment and supplies, so we should be using them. Any member that wants to get involved, contact the tribal office. <coughs> On the language grant, <coughs> Richard has applied for this three times, and unfortunately they were denied. He has contacted Brenda Snyder, who has Métis cousins, and also has, uh, has been working on the Machif language. Richard is learning some words in the Ojibwe language through loud thunder. He plans on having a pamphlet with Ojibwe words transcribed to English. Hopefully this will be ready for the next meeting. Richard also asked if there are any grant writers to please send them our way. He had a display of pictures and books, and he hopes some of the books will be for sale at the Cultural Center. Health Community Report by Daryl Rummel on the wellness program. She anticipates that on teaching some of the younger Little Shelf children about sweat lodges and have a hand in making a sweat lodge. She, she also would like to take them on a trip next summer to pick sage. She passed out a wish list of supplies that members could donate for her projects so she can accomplish some of these tasks. She has been in contact with Clyde Landry, who is a cultural leader, and maybe can document all of this on film. Her health activities will include a youth council journey, keep youth involved, health activities, and possibly a canoe journey. Everything will be done traditional. Katie Antonich, the new tribal prevention program specialist, reported on a three-day trip to Polson for schooling on this program. She is also a nurse, and Chairman McGray would like Katie to be the new health coordinator as well. Katie wants to bring back our culture in a sacred way. There will be a program for youth in Brown, and in August, the National React Program. So if you have some youth that would be interested, please contact Katie at the Little Shell office. 501c3 status report by Leona Keenenberger <coughs> reported that the report was finally mailed in, in December 2012. We should know within 90 days our status on this and possibly sooner. Leona said there may be a problem because the back taxes were not paid. More grants may be available for Little Shell Tribe once we get this status reinstated. Uh, Leona also said she mailed in the annual report. Visitor Center at Stuckey Road by Clarence Ebertson. The, the walls were all white, so Carly and Faulkner, Rose, and an uncle had been painting the rooms with new colors. New signs and prices are being checked out. Some artists have consigned art. Uh, James Parker Field has been gathering history of the Little Shell Tribe. We just hope to have it full operation by May. Old business, the tribal elections were held in November 2012, and the swearing-in ceremony was held on November 18th. Chairman Gray is working with our tribal attorneys, Troy and Donna, Donna Woodward, on the judicial court system. We are also planning to have a constitutional convention to update the tribe's constitution. Members have to per participate in this process. It is not just up to the council. Uh, new business, Council Member Donnie Davis reported that he went to the legislative meetings for the ICE funding, also went to the inauguration for Governor Bullock. He spent four hours in line shaking hands. He said the Little Shell Tribe was the only tribe represented. Don also has been checking out posts for an extension or an addition building at the 1529 Stucky Road property. This would give us room to have our meetings out there and also a place for our members to use for receptions and such. The quarterly meetings were announced for 2013 and we will try to start having meetings in different areas starting next year. The dates at that time were February 2nd, May 18, September 1, <coughs> and November 9, also being the Zoom date. There's a new website being designed in the near future, and they're also <coughs> going to be starting up the newsletter again. Uh, at that time, they were looking for ideas on what to name it to let the office know. Uh, in the contents of the newsletter will be the council voices with reports from your council members. If you have a business, you can advertise in the newsletter, of which there will be a fee. There will also be a fee for members and others to receive the newsletter. We would like to get it out to the public in May. Uh, under the public comment, one member asked of the September 1st uh, quarterly meeting, and it coincides with the Métis celebration in Lewistown. 
it was asked if the Little Shell Tribe will have their powwow on that date also. It does not allow members to attend those functions. The council took it under advisement and will discuss it with the powwow committee, and there will be a decision announced at the next meeting. There was a motion to adjourn by Luella Fredrickson, seconded by Leona Keener and Keenenberger and Richard Peronto. Potluck lunch was served to members and passed the hat to pay for drummers and singers. Nicholas Baruma's book unveiling and the book signing was next. Nicholas, Nicholas was presented with a buffalo robe by the Little Shell Council on behalf of all Little Shell members. It is a fabulous book. You can put, purchase the book at the Little Shell Tribal Office or sending $39.95 and $6 shipping and handling to the Little Shell Tribe at P.O. Box 543, <coughs> Black Eagle, Montana, 59414. <coughs> Nicholas spoke on the, of the trials that the Little Shell had gone through over the many years. And it's all documented in the book. He said he is pissed off that we have not received our way over the federal recognition. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any uh, additions or corrections? Move this thing through. Okay, motion by Fancy for approval of minutes. Do I have a second? Um, you know on the federal recognition report, said that they were going to attach a bill from the Lumbee tribe. That hasn't happened. They aren't going to go to the Lumbee tribe. Oh, oh that's not an addition? Oh, okay. That's a question. It could be a question. I'll talk about that. Oh. Do I have a second? I'll second. We have a second. All approved. Approved. Nice. Yes. Got it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go into a uh, new business. Um, I'll give you a few reports here on what's been happening. Uh, first of all, the federal recognition, as Leona stated, uh, Senator Te Tester's office was going to, they, they're working with the Lumbee tribe too, Mark Jetty, and he wanted to see if, if we wanted to uh, submit our bill with theirs. But um, under advisement from our attorneys, S.R. Denton, or Linda, she said, don't do it. They've got a lot of baggage. So we told Tester's office, don't, we, we want to just keep going the way we're going. With that said, our bill is now in committee, and they're trying to get it to be um, not go through a hearing, but just get it straight to markup. So, and that's where the process. I think that'll go in their next um, uh, committee meeting. So, with that, we're just waiting for them to do that, and they think it won't have to go through a hearing because it's been heard so many times, <laughs> and, it'll, and it should go right through. And that'll go in, in, then into markup, which will be possibly attached to a bill when they find a bill that they can be attached to. Um, language bill. So, Senator Wendy Boy, um, uh, has a Senate bill in Montana 342, which is the um, Montana Indian Preservation Language Pilot Project, or program is what it's called. And so in the next two years, it's a uh, $2 million. Um, uh, the STED, State Tribal Economic Commission, Development Commission is gonna uh, oversee it. We had our first meeting yesterday on this bill. And um, right now, the way it stands, I mean, there's a lot of rules to it and a lot of accountability that they're gonna to hold the tribes to. Um, the tribes, it was interesting right at the end of the phone call, uh, we had, uh, I think it was Fort Belknap, they were, they, they were talking about distributing the money, how to do it, and I say we do it equally across all tribes. Fort Belknap thinks that they should get more because they have two languages. I said, well, that's the case, we have two languages too. And then, yeah, three. <laughs> and then um, Crow, they want it um, based on population. Sure. <laughs> so no way. So you know, I wrote a uh, note to um, Jason Smith, uh, Office of Indian Affairs, and told him we want it distributed equally. And I think besides those two, everyone else is in agreement. So that's going to be taking place in the next phone call. And there's a lot of stuff that has to happen. It's got to go to public review, public comments. Um, 
back to the legislator to make sure we're following the rules. We set up the program guidelines. But um, what I'll do is I'll keep everybody informed on Facebook and the tribe's website as to how that's going to happen. Um, oh, and then we did have a, a new board. Um, they're going to oversee the program, but not, you know, and, and not actually do the. the um, they're going to have to help decide how we want to have our program set up. Meaning, do we want to have a dictionary? Do we want to have a book? Do we want to have video or whatever? Those new board members are Daryl Rummel, uh, Lola, Lola. Um, Gerald Sr. and Nicholas Room. Yeah, five. So we had an odd number. Can you repeat that, please, Chairman? Which one didn't you get? The names. I got Daryl, uh, Leona, Nicholas, Gerald Sr., Gerald Sr., and Luella. I got one. I said it was five. Leona, Luella, Daryl Rummel. Okay. Thank you. So with that, they all set up, I mean, they, they all have to make sure that this program follows, I mean, it was like, wow, <laughs> the state is setting up some pretty tough guidelines on this one, so good luck to them. Uh, just a note on that, uh, we have three languages that are spoken historically, uh, Chippewa, Cree, and Michif. So there would be three that would apply to our tribe historically. The next thing we have is a, um, a, new, a new election ordinance. And what this is, is we had passed it through um, our attorneys, Troy and Donna. Um, I'll have Luella read part of it, but all it is, all of you go ahead and read it. It says, adoption of the Little Shell Tribal Election Ordinance. Whereas, it is in the interest of the Little Shell Tribal Council to adopt and use the Little Shell Tribal Election Ordinance which was written to ensure a fair, honest, and accurate tribal elections. Whereas Article 3, Section 6 states in part, the Executive Board will manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Little Shell Tribe of Chippewa Indians of Montana, therefore be it resolved that as of an affirmative vote by the Little Shell Tribal Council on this date, May 18, 2013, the Little Shell Election Ordinance be accepted as legal and binding upon the Little Shell Tribe of the Indians of Montana for all future tribal elections and it's signed off by the council members. So what this is, is, and it'll be on file at the office if anyone wants to come and read it. All it is is it just sets um, the election standards that anyone can follow in the future, you know, and what it is, it'll have, um, it has the week of the month that it has to be, so that we don't change it and everyone knows. It's a very, you know, it, is, it just gives, offers consistency for our elections. And it'll help uh, our um, election committee just follow that. And it's pretty, really good, pretty basic. You know? um, Troy and Donna, the attorneys, thought it'd be a good idea to, to have it just so we can uh, um, stay on a consistent track from them in the future. So. With that, we can have a motion. Yeah. Make a motion to accept it. Have a motion by Clancy. Second. Any, any discussion? Gerald. Yeah. Is this the way it's written now? Is that the way it's going to stay? Are you guys, are you going to elect, are you going to determine who is in the election committee? It doesn't, it, we don't determine that. Oh, okay. I no, thought no, we don't have the council does. Okay. I thought there was a spot in there that said that. Okay. I'll reread it. I'll reread it. Yeah. We just we approve them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I and then I've got a couple another thing too. It says thirty days before the election. That's kind of a short. We had a tough time with ninety days last time. Well, I mean, if it's consistent, now we'll now all members know that we'll have an election on this day every. Okay. You know, two years for the uh, at large three, and then every four years yeah. for the so I mean they know. Okay, just but it has to be before the thirty days. It can be any time before that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, it has okay. to, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah okay. it has to be before. Okay. Just as I mean we can go you know, six months out if we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Just, yeah. Thank you. But that they thought that would give enough time and that would Troy and Donna, so sure. Yeah. 
Okay, do I have a, made a second? I did, yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Motion passed. Our resolution passed. And like I said, that'll be at, um, Joe has a copy of this, and then it'll also be at the office for anyone else to, to come and read it if you want. Okay, and then we have um, a new business uh, tribal health coordinator, that's going to be Katie. Um, we met with the, the TLC, and they're going to have a, a survey going out to all tribes, and we don't have to pay anything, but we get the data back from it, and it's a health, community health survey, and it's called uh, BRFSS. And what we're going to do is going to try to provide some help in and um, so they can contact members either by phone, email, or through the mail. And we just ask that you spread the word when you, I don't know exactly when they're going to send it out, but if you get it, please fill it out because it's going to help us with, to know what our, what our membership needs, you know, via health-wise. So that'll be uh, coming on the horizon really quick. And I guess we can... And then also we have, uh, we're working on a new tribal website because the site we have now is just kind of a static page. Um, so that's coming up. And then also we have, um, we've got a new, we're going to do this. This is just a mock-up of a cultural center brochure. We're going to do some new ones. I'll pass that around. Take a look at it. We're going to have those just to, just to get things up to date and, you know, with the new cultural center, um, the museum cultural center, how we're going to call that so people know about it. And let's see, the newsletter, that is done and will be mailed this week. So we did uh, meet our deadline of getting it out in May. Um, but to be honest, we only have maybe 16, 17 now. Well, we've got some more in a day. Oh, do we? Yeah. <laughs> 18 people signed up for it. So is it going to be on the, the website? I think one we'll time? I think we'll do that one time just to show people what it looks like, so they can at least the front page of it, mm -hmm. you know, and then they can see what it actually looks like and start, you know, spreading the word if you can. That it's available. Switch and bait. Exactly. <laughs> Teaser. <laughs> so that will be going out this week. And then we have, uh, you know, like, uh, do you know about this, Felix? That you can pay $12 and then just come on board and tell us what you want to do? We signed up for it. Oh, you did? Cool. Who's going to do that? You, Patty? I think you ransacked everybody in your family to join that day. Cool. Are they going to have extra copies in the office that you can purchase or something? Yeah, I think we yeah, we can do that, definitely. Because that's where they're going to be printed, is at yeah. the office and be sitting there, so we can do that. Okay, moving on, we have uh, the 2013 ICE money, which is, um, uh, we had to put in for it last year, because they're worried with the switch in, um, you know, the new the election, the new governor, we didn't know if it would be funded, whatnot. We were approved for ours, and ours is the, um, out at the cultural center, and I'll let um, Clancy talk about that right now. What we're going to do with it? Okay, we're uh, yeah. going to put an addition on the back side <coughs> that'll be 60 feet. We're going to make it big enough, and it'll be open so we can have meetings. Um, we'll have a big garage door on one side, so like toys for tots, and they bring the truck in. We can unload our many pallets of toys without having to take them off every pallet and unload them like we've done in the past. So simplify it and then we can also leave them right there and have the giveaway right there at the Cultural Visitor Center instead of having to transport them somewhere else to give them away. Um, when we do get it finished, we'll, uh, it'll basically open, like I said, for meetings. If somebody's got a function that's going to happen, um, It'll be big enough. We should be able to house a pretty good turnout in there. So and we'll, it'll be heated when we get done. So even in the winter time, it should be usable. 
and we have started. Um, Could you just explain what ICE means? A lot of people may not know. Well, Indian Country Economic Development. And that was set up by uh, Governor Schweitzer eight years ago to fund, yeah, and it's uh, $70,000 um, when you put in your application. Uh, but we, this year, the 2000, because we didn't know if it was going to go away, each tribe donated back 6900 into the program so we could try to fund it and keep it going, you know, coming year. So, so we have actually like $6,200 for the new addition. When will you be starting, Monty? I already started last week. I was out there and dug, the, dug it out for the 60-foot um, edition because that, you know, it all slopes and so yeah. pretty good slope back there. Got it dug out, um, working with Donnie on it and we're looking at some, some contracts and whatnot that we can get put together to, number one, get the foundation board and then we'll get the materials and get the building put up. And uh, so once we get to that point, it shouldn't take, I mean, we won't be asking long, for volunteers. Need to be up. What's that? Are you asking for volunteers to help? No, I think it's more. Not at this point? Yeah. Yeah, not at this point. It'll, we'll, I guess with the state funding, we'll have to get the, um, when we get it framed up, we'll have somebody come in and do and the, the framing. The reason I'm asking that, um, is because with my wellness program, I have funds available if kids will help, and they will also buy tools. They'll let us buy tools and uh, equipment that we need, and, and even lumber. So there is some funds available for that if you want to meet with me sometime. Okay. That'd be and, great. And maybe after we have the building up. But we have to have the kids involved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It can't be just us doing it. There has to be some kids there doing things. So the cultural center is closed then until after this edition is put on? No. No, no it's so it's, it's fully operational. Well, we guess you want we've to going to that yeah point. we've at this point in time we don't have anybody out there. Um, we just we finished the painting on Saturday. Right, the building the inside is painted. Um, the new lighting for the displays, um, the Thursday, yeah. yep. that's all done. Um, the gift shop is there and open, and we've been working with a couple programs through job service that to get somebody out there that would be under their program to, to work, basically full time. Um, so we have talked to them, and there's some other programs that we're hoping down the road and get some funding for to keep somebody full time because number one, when we do get it finished and we open it, we need to have it open full time. Um, so, the state. Gonna, so there's there's no listing with like uh, the governor's office, Indian Affairs, or because I, I I've been at places where like Mike Jenny's been there with Oak County and said, well yeah, the little show people they've got a cultural center, go talk to these people if you want to learn about some Indians around close around the Helen area. And so then if, if information, if people are coming from information, I have nothing to assume, I have nothing to get back out. Well, we'll have that brochure if you're done quickly. That's going to be one of the, like it's, it is not ready to be opened yet okay. because we're working with Nicholas and Brenda Schneider on the actual exhibits, and those aren't printed yet. Oh, okay. We're talking. So we're looking at probably two months, three no, months, longer no, than that. No, no, no. It's got to be done, finished by end of June. It has to be. And you know, a good example of this was I put in a request from the state of Montana to put up signs on the um, Smelter Avenue, mm -hmm. Northwest Bypass. Yeah. And he thought we, we were already open, and he denied it mm -hmm. because he said he was out there twice and it wasn't open, no one was there. And I said, we're, we're, we didn't even finish painting yet. Mm -hmm. We can open it. And he said, oh. I said, I'll submit a new request. He said, no, just tell me when you're ready, and he'll be out there. So, But it has to be done by end of June. And we'll be we're closer than that. So the bus loads can show up in July. Yeah, June thirtieth probably. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald, the tourism of, uh, of the state of Great of Montana, Montana. Mm -hmm. they also will put up signs. 
they will, uh, years ago, they used to come to Haver to the office and see if we wanted to put up uh, cultural signs mm -hmm. along the highways. So that might be something you could check into. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. And we do have the outside signage up. I don't know if you've been out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But not lately. Yeah. yeah. So that's, those went up, not, what, about two, three weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. There's one out by the road. It's on a post and then on the front building the other side. Yeah. So those are up. So yeah. does that signage have to be coordinated through NDP? The ones on the highway do, those little green ones that say, you know, whatever. That does. And I, I'm talking to the guy who denied us. Oh, okay. So, and then also, you know, we are going to be, we do have money in there for some advertising to do, like in um, Russell Country, or now, what's it called? Um, Missouri River Country, is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They used to be Russell Country. They changed all the countries in Montana. Like Gold West was set, is now Southwest Country. But, so we're going to advertise in that, too, you know, show them that we do have that out there. So that's on the agenda, too. On that note, uh, since we're on the cultural center, I would like to point out uh, that I did contact the historic trolley here in town, and it's been uh, sold to the historic preservation uh, downtown Great Falls. I believe a Mr. Fleck, F-L-E-C-K, is in charge of, of that program. But he said he'd be willing, if the Little Shaw were to put together a, a committee to approach him about having the historic trolley uh, drive up Stucky Road and promote the cultural center and as what, by tying it in with the First People's Buffalo Jump and the Lewis Clark Interpretive Center and C.M. Russell Museum and all the attractions that we have here in Great Falls. So Mr. Fleck is, uh, Mr. Fleck is open to the idea of Little Shell folks contacting him and maybe working something out to where the trolley will swing by there and promote the, promote the cultural center and, and the tourism industry here in Montana. Donnie, do you have anything on that? Okay. Well, Clutch is doing a mighty fine job. <laughs> just waiting, just trying to get everything ready for the drain field and make sure that when we do open this thing up, it's going to last and be right. So it's looking good right now. And we have a meeting with a concrete contractor at any time, probably this week, if I can get clients lined up with it. And then I'll be in town in a couple weeks. And then, and Darrell, that's another thing I'll need to talk to you about. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to bring it up to Charles, too, when we get ready for, especially like the finish and all the site work. It would be great to have some in There's a lot of work that way. There's a lot of work in and just Yeah, they said we could do a lot of things with the kids, even the landscaping. Yeah, absolutely. That's so, you know, anything to keep them busy and not using drugs and alcohol. Perfect. Well, I've got a, about a <coughs> seven-foot pile of dirt that's about 35-foot <laughs> long if they want to bring their buckets. You got one shovel? <laughs> and a bucket. It, there was way more dirt in there than, than you anticipated. what I yeah. thought there was. Yeah, so it was a steep hill. You could probably sell that. That's part of yeah. Hill 57. Yeah. You can yeah. sell that. Yeah, there's a lot of that there. Oh, yeah, you can sell that. A little bit. Historic grounds. Yeah. <laughs> so we are, uh, okay. like Gerald said, we're open the culture, actual cultural center that's there, the building, that'll be all finished up here directly so that we can get it opened and, and we'll have all the displays and everything made. And with the, I guess on the addition, um, we've got to get that all brought up, concrete forward, of course, and then it's just going through the process with the state to get everything done and paid. What's the uh, anticipated admission date? What was that? Admission? Oh. We have, uh, I don't think we weren't going to charge anything at first just to get people to come in, but and that's why we have the gift shop. That would be the revenue. And then when the new part's open, you have to rent that. So that will be, and we haven't decided on the price yet, that kind of stuff. If you want to rent it for like a um, wedding reception or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, that will be determined. So there's no anticipated dollar figure that could be projected out for not attendance really. revenue or building revenue? Not or yet. And it's all based on the gift shop right now. Sales of that stuff. Did you put anything in the newsletter about Little Shell members bringing their handmade items? 
to the gift shop to sell. Is that in the intersection? Yeah. I didn't put it in that, but that would be good. I think we should put artists. it on the Facebook or someplace because yeah. we have a lot of artists and, and talented people. Yeah. Well, you, you know, on the one, we're kind of have to wait till we at least get some in there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's our biggest issue right now. Once we get some in there, but we'll if we can get yeah. some contact, it would. Be good. We're going to work with. Uh, I'm going to go to the women's prison in, in Billings and then talk to the Deer Lodge and have, uh, see if they want to co-sign some stuff too. And mm -hmm. Richard has some people lined up, and Naomi I think does too. So I think we're in pretty good shape with that stuff. So if you have artists or people that have that stuff, we will have that consignment form, form so that they can maybe they put in yes. five or whatever. We'll well-known artists, you know, Jay Conway, mm -hmm. uh, Harvey Ratty. Uh, there's a lot of well-known artists that, that are Little Shell members. Yeah, their names are. Yeah. I've already uh, roughed up Leona and, and told her to go out and uh, get with Jay Conway and and uh, promote the, his, some of his work. You better and call him ahead of time because he had yeah. a gun and he yeah. shoots at people. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just if you're not packages invited. to him. <laughs> yeah, FedEx, FedEx to him uh, every other day, yeah. uh, a year ago. I but, can talk to him too if you want me so to. Leona's on the clock, so Leona's on the clock. Okay, so anyway, with that, if you have any artists or people who want to put things in that gift shop, We'll just have them fill out a form so we know what they yeah. want and out of it. That would all be insured, wouldn't it? Well, because when you get that. into things like Harvey Ratty and Jay, their their stuff sells for thousands of dollars. Right. Yeah. And it's that not just yeah. working with the insurance, that's where we're gonna right now we don't have coverage on that. Yeah. Okay. Because we haven't had it's not open basically. Oh. Mm -hmm. But they specifically asked how much yeah we're going to have in that gift shop and if we start putting items like that then we're going to have to increase our coverage and, and a lot. sad but true when we start putting that kind of items in there we're going to probably have to put screening over the windows because well, the security the aspect there. <laughs> you need an apartment there yeah. <laughs> I'm selling my condo in case anybody wanted one <laughs> so that's all I got. Well, okay, so uh, I guess we'll move into committee reports and well, enrollment. On the enrollment, Roger Saloy and Pat Mackey have been working really, really hard trying to get some people enrolled, and today we are enrolling 57. Uh, there's a lot of people calling and coming in because they got letters from the Indian Trust Settlement saying they needed more information. So uh, a lot of time is being spent on doing letters for them. So it doesn't does keep them from you know, working on enrollments as much. But And they have until July 1st to get these additional information into the Indian Trust Settlement. So uh, it really slows the enrollment process down. That's about it. That you know, also with that too, we've had a lot of requests. Uh, Indian Child Welfare, Daryl, you, you're taking the course, right? I'm working on it. You're, you're signed up. Yeah, I'm signed up. I paid the money and just take the time to finish it. Yeah, so we'll have a certified Indian Child Welfare person. And I did go in and fill in for Pat while she was out and right. uh, got quite a few things caught yeah. up before she came. We get a lot of calls on that. Hey, office. For right now, uh, we don't have the money to hire somebody in the office, and so with the volunteers we've got, we're only going to have the office hours from one until four for the time being. And if we can get uh, you know some funding or whatever, then we would be open more. But for right now, it's just one to four. The new flags are in at the office. They're forty-five dollars. They have to be. Uh, mailed, it'll be uh, $5 shipping and handling, and the books are, we still have books, they're $39.95 and $6 shipping and handling. Next, uh, 501C3 and House Bill 286, Leona. Well, there really isn't anything to report on the 501, sadly, but um, I have been in contact with Josh, the lawyer in D.C., and he has been trying to get hold of the IRS to see what the holdup is. 
we should have known something by March, but with nothing, just absolutely nothing yet. So he's going to make another phone call Monday, and hopefully we'll find out what the heck is going on. And with the um, House Bill 286, I was asked by the representative Clarence, uh, Clarina Brocky to testify for that bill, and it has passed. So if any of uh, you, kids, you people have uh, children who are trying to go to college, and they are enrolled in Little Show, and they're only an eighth uh, native, they qualify for fee waivers. So that has passed. In the past, it was a quarter blood. Mm -hmm. But now it's just if you were enrolled. So that bill has passed. So that's good news for the little show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any where the quality is when you get that no. anywhere? No. In Montana. Has to be Montana. Mm -hmm. So pass the word on that. Well, so that should be on the Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be in the mm -hmm. newsletter also. Yeah, once the governor. I don't know if we signed that one yet or not. Mm -hmm. yeah, good job. Hey, uh, Richard, how uh, I'll round down three cap. Hey, uh, before I get into that, uh, the powwow and round dance recap, I'm going to invite Mr. Brian, or Brian Azure, over here. Can you just a minute? Can you grab him? Brian. Katie could give her report now. Yeah. Wait. Or we could do the financial report. Or do you want to do the report? She's gone. Okay, real quick, I'd like to introduce everybody to uh, Mr. Brian Azure. Uh, the work that you uh, see over here as you guys walked in is uh, the work that uh, Brian has done. And he also has a clothing line, and he's put uh, some of his shawls and clothing line up on the uh, closet there for you guys to look at. And one of the things when you guys walk outside, if we take a break here before the end of the meeting, if you walk outside and take a look to the right, there's a medicine wheel chandelier that Brian made uh, entirely from items from Hill 57. So we got a, a real talented individual and artist here with uh, arts and crafts. And I'd like to see some of these pictures, somebody take pictures and get some of this stuff on the websites or on the Facebook sites to promote Brian. And I'll allow Brian to speak a little bit about some of your talents. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Um, a lot of the stuff you see here is um, just artwork and stuff that I've done. I've done it mainly for just family members. I haven't really put it out there, produce it, sell it, things like that. Um, when it comes to the word artist, I don't like to be big headed or boastful. But the truth is, is I'm an artist in every sense that the word has the meaning. I make music, I design, graphic design. Um, write poetry, philosophy, a lot of different things. Um, the Lord blessed me with hands, hands that can build and make whatever my mind sees. So a lot of the stuff that you see is all original. The coats are original, the design on the coat is original. Um, they're called cheap and coats. There is a hoodie, they come in hoodies. Um, the hoodie that says cheap and on the back, they're embroidery clothes. Most of my line is embroidery, embroidered clothing. I do have silk screen, some things. Um, I have six different designs out right now. I have zip up hoodies, pullover hoodies, t-shirts, hats, beanies. Um, I, just, I have two new uh, items that I've designed, that I designed from scratch. Um, and they're the shawls, savagely sexy shawls. <laughs> awesome. And one, 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 awesome. Of the, one of the, um, logos I have out is savagely sexy. It comes in a hoodie. I still have to get them embroidered on these. I hand sewed them myself, <clears throat> all from scratch. It's a new apparel. Nothing like this ever been made. I have another one that I'm coming out with because um, I'm going to restart my business. Um, it was called Any Clothing. Here, babe. Come on. Okay. It was called Any Clothing Company. Um, I got involved in the, some of the powwows and got couple uh, vendors to sell for me, which turned out a bad thing. I ended up you know, losing most of my inventory on my clothes and stuff like that, so I slowed down for a little bit. My wife, this is Jennifer, um, I've been waiting for 
my little one to come out <laughs> before I before I get going on my new the, the business again. If the business is called Native Wear, I'll read the in it and the and uh, um, the name because the in it is funny. I kind of had a dream. Um, I made these clothes, and the first ones that I came out with, I had a shirt that said in it cousin, you know, with a T. And in between each letter was a dot. Well, I went to a powwow and a teacher came up to me and was like, what does in it stand for? And I'm like, well, slang, you know? Like, we said, oh, in it, you know? And I, they didn't get it. And so it bothered me. And I kept praying about it, praying about it. And finally, I was sleeping one night and he came to me in a dream. And it, E-N-N-I-T, which stands for every nation of Native Indians together. So that's the reason for my name. Um, I have a hoodie coming out, which will be another original garment. This is like kind of a fashionable garment per se, but see, I have the hood big enough for when their hair's up or whatever. You know, they're out, you know, doing their thing or whatnot. And then you have this, you can cross it in whichever way you want, or you could tuck it into the back like this. And, there, and it, there, there is a hook on it, because it is for women, and I know most women like know how to use the hook thing, so we put a little hook right up the front, you know, so you guys are familiar with it. And so I'll have these coming out as soon as he comes out. You know what I mean? Like I have a few different ones. Um, they're not really for sale at this point, because these are just the first three original ones that I have made. I have leather. Like this, I have a black one, a little more fashionable, you know. Um, I'll have these out for sale, but I also have a hoodie coming out. Hoodie is my own name that I made up, um, hoodie, because it's kind of like a poncho, okay? It's like a poncho, it'll have a hood, it's going to be made out of sweatshirt material. Um, the cheese and design will be on it, but it's going to be a little bit different. If you put the hoodie on, you'll have the hood, and it'll be kind of like a poncho. The chief, he's going to be right here. But it's going to have a tail that comes all the way down. The tail will come all the way off of the garment. It'll pick back up on the back side, go up the back. The last two feathers will hang out right here on the shoulder. It'll have clips underneath it so the poncho don't blow around and stuff like that. Just something light for, you know, in summer weather, whatever. That way you can get like that. And these are... Both original apparel. No one's made them, no one's done them. So this is the direction that I'm moving. The direction is for the people. I want to give back, you know what I mean, to our people. And that's really what it's all about. It's trying to get the thread, get it tied together so we can pull it and bring the unity that I think is needed. And the only way I know how to do that is my passion. And my passion is art, you know? So um, that, this is my way of trying to give back. Like it says, every nation of Native Indians together. Not just one tribe, but all of them, you know? And in a business sense, some of these things, like, can be worked off of and brought to the different reservations. Maybe there could be jobs created, you know, from it. Extra building, get some machines in there create some jobs for our people. You know, that, that's the kind of thing that I'm trying to do is make a win-win situation. It's not for me. You know what I mean? It's for everybody. You know, so that's kind of where I'm at with everything. But the artwork is out. There's copies out here like this and that. Everything that I do is all original. It's all made by me. It's all made by my hand. Um, we have acrylics, watercolors, colored pencils, pencil, stickers, magnets, Shirts, all of it. So. Do you have a patent on your stuff? Huh? Do you have a patent on, on anything? I have uh, everything that's out. I have like a chief in. I have it all copyrighted and patented. The only things I do not have patented, these are copyrighted, but they are not patented. And that's kind of why I'm not selling them right now. Because, you know, a patent is a little more expensive. You know what I mean? And with when you have a, an original garment, 
that has not ever been made, it kind of got, I kind of get a little lost. Like, cause I don't, I'm moving in my own direction. No one's bringing out our humor. And that's kind of what this is all about. Okay. You know, cause I have TP creeping shirts, <laughs> up to shirts, it says up to, take the F off. It says up to, I have big gun shirts, which has the dog line with a piece of fry bread on the front. There's a nice fry bread here. Um, the savagely sexy and a couple of them. I have folders full of stuff that I've just been designing and trying to mesmerize and put all this together. You know, I've, I've really tried to get it all together. And like I said, I'm trying to move, but we're waiting for your eyes. <laughs> He'll be coming any day, praise the Lord. So we're just waiting for him to start structuring the business around him. So that's what I'll have to say. The dream catcher is like a Uh, Brian, yeah. uh, Clint, uh, Count, uh, Vice Chairman Clancy Severson and uh, Councilman uh, Donnie Davis uh, will get out, get with you after the meeting uh, because they have consignment forms or will be able to give you information on consignment if, you, if that's what you're interested in doing on your items at the Cultural Center. And he just mentioned that they have forms and whatnot to work with our artists within the tribe. So I thank you and I think you guys are very talented. And just to let you know, on August 24th, we'll be doing a powwow and we hope to see your stuff uh, there uh, at, our, at our hall. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And since I brought that up, uh, the uh, Powell Committee had its meeting on uh, May 11th last week. And I just want to let you know that the, pres the co chairs of the Powell Committee is Joe Overton and James Parker Shield. So they're leading the, the Powell Committee. Other members are uh, Peggy Myers. Uh, Tony Joe Atchison, and did I miss anybody, Joel? You? No, oh, okay, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, the date and location has been set for the 2013 powwow. Uh, the date is Saturday, August 25th. Fourth, fourth. Uh, fourth. Yeah, excuse me, the 24th, okay. And there will be two sessions, one at 1 p.m., and the other will be at 6 p.m. Uh, a traditional feed will be held at 5 p.m. and I believe Tony Joe said that the large uh, the McGillis family in, was probably going to sponsor that for the feed so we'll have a lot of food there. Uh, the location is going to be the old Big R store at 4800 10th Avenue South uh, and there, he's basically donating that space there to the tribe for, uh, for nothing. So we're, we're getting a good deal out of it, and plus vendors and artists like we have with Brian Azure and others will be able to demonstrate some of their arts and crafts and their potential to the public. Uh, the that's indoors, Richard? That's going to be indoors. Yeah. There is a, pow a powwow poster that's going to be uh, produced. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that, Joel? While oh, you're sure. Up here? Thank you. Yep. <laughs> um, this is the, the poster that we got planned out. This is what we have. Instead of the buffalo up here, is where we're going to put the Eagle Staff uh, took some photos of the images today, and we're going to put that up here. And then this is just kind of a rundown list of people to contact, and so that. And then we have it uh, below the shelter for uh, traditional powwow Saturday, the date, and all, all that information and time, of course, traditional date. And then we'll get this done and we'll send this out to other businesses, uh, you know, like the government of Indian Affairs and, and all these other places that we can go to and uh, put these up at the uh, Indian Alliance and, and other places up in Rocky Boy and scattered all around. We got people that would run these out and get them out and uh, then we get some information for all that. One question, Joel. Uh, was the picture of this eagle staff right here? Yeah, we're going to try to put uh, that in okay. the square where the buffalo is at. That was just kind of a place uh, over. Okay. And so we're going to work that in. Okay. And then we have uh, banners that we're going to get made. Uh -huh. And we're going to put that image. Okay. In, and we're not going to be able to put a date in because we'll have to buy banners every time. Okay. You know, because if it's going to change on the calendar, you can't change that around. But it's just going to be, you know, the Little Shell Tribe and. Uh, powwow and you know the public welcome 
just kind of a basic generic banner that we put up on the freeway on both entrances to this building area. Just put them on post ponders and secure them, try to lock them on there and so they won't be walked off with, you know. But that's kind of what we got planned to we did this morning this. I worked all that out. And uh, I guess that's what it would and uh, I don't know if we want to talk about the smoker. Uh, yes, uh, it's on here. Um, uh, okay, uh, the Little Shell Travel Princess Contest will be held. For details, contact Tony Joe at 403-5463. That's the number that she uh, gave. And I believe they'll be on the posters and the, be and on the, the posters printouts uh, promoting this. Uh, of course, uh, if everybody remembers last year's powwow, there was uh, kids' rides and uh, activities for the kids uh, and everybody. Uh, th those will be available on the site at the powwow. And one of the things that we're planning on doing the week before the powwow is the powwow committee is looking at possibly holding a boxing smoker uh, right there at the Big R location to raise money for the powwow. We're looking at, we got some outstanding Bach Todd Foster, uh, Leo Bersier. Uh, you know, uh, the Malmstrom has some excellent amateur boxers uh, that might be interested in supporting a fundraiser to promote this event. And uh, the, we're still working on how the tickets are going to be split, probably between the owner of the location and the Little Shell Tribe. So that's still in plans, is that yeah, correct? for the powwow. And that's, uh, with Jeff, he's the owner of the business up there. He's trying to turn this building into a, an event center. And and we may be the first big event that he has there, so there's still a little work to do on it. But we're trying to pull out the smoke of the day before so that we can split the game as being a powwow fundraiser to put the powwow in the black for the rest of the year and then finish up what we have to pay for this powwow and then have money left over for the next powwow and then use that as kind of a recurring event have uh, as many amateur bouts as we can fill and run one professional car and by getting the sponsorship and having the money left over then we can pay for the professional bike because they're not going to fight for free you know that's their job get beat up and get paid so and then uh, like we said Todd Foster Jeff was saying we could get him in as a, as a referee and so we're going to try to work all this in and try to get as cheap as we can of course you know times are tough but we're going to try to push everything through and and uh, creator willing we'll, we'll pull this off with minimal funding from us you know we'll need some seed money to get us going but try to get this into a uh, perpetually so that we can get the other tribal members as they come up and come through that they'll be in the powwow and you know it's a tribal event the powwow is what the tribe needs to do you know, be a tribe thank you good much joel uh so that's the information on the powwow uh and then just to recap we had our uh, fifth annual uh unity walk and round dance uh on uh, uh earlier this month on may 4th at the northwest center it was attended by probably at one time uh, 150 to 200 people. I don't have the exact numbers, uh, but we're going to continue to do that. It's a it's an event that we started uh, six years ago. It's attended uh, like uh, Mr. Azure pointed out, uh, unity between all nations, and that's kind of what it's uh, the tribal flag is that you might have seen there. Those of you that attended the event, I'd like to thank the tribal council here for supporting that event and also attending that event because uh, we'll continue to do these in the years to come. Uh, the, the unique thing that I'd like to point out is, uh, you know, our Métis history within the tribe is strong with the Métis being recognized up in Canada, and then we have the Métis celebration that many of our people attend. It's in their 19th year in Lewistown. So this year round dance uh, that we do every year in the spring illustrates the difference between a commercial round dance that you might see in school or a commercial or a round dance at a powwow. This is a Chippewa ceremony that uh, is run by a Chippewa elder that belongs to us as Chippewa people, the Little Shell. And that kind of illustrates the difference between if you go to a round dance that we do here every year uh, in May, or go to a round dance that you might see in a school or at a powwow. So I wanted to point that out. Uh, that's it for, uh, uh, for the powwow and round dance update. And, uh, anybody have any questions? Questions, okay. We'll move on to uh, financial since Colleen is oh, not here, um, no, no, we'll that. All right, the April income is $14,392.01. That one cent was the interest. The April expenses, 
97 cents. Then we have um, a budget for the Blue Shell Tribe, it's now in progress. For the checking account, general balance for the ICE money, we have we have fifteen thousand three hundred and three dollars and thirty-eight cents, which fourteen thousand four hundred and thirty-eight dollars and eighty-six cents is from the ICE. From the tobacco program, we have four hundred one dollars and eighty-eight cents, and then in savings, we have twenty thousand one hundred and twelve dollars and sixty cents. So that's ten dollars more than we had last time. We had. <laughs> <laughs> that's the interest. That's it. We need a motion to financial. I think we need a motion. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Discussion? All approved? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, we have a couple of health committee reports. Yeah. Um, who wants to go first? Katie? to Browning June 24th, 25th, 26th, and 27th for a gathering, gathering of Native American youth looking for kids between 11 and 14. So if you know any, please send them to me. I have applications with me. I have the information. There's a packet um, along with the, it's got a list of the things that they'll need to bring. I will provide transportation and I'll be taking two chaperones. So if anybody's interested in chaperoning, please let me know. Um, I've got I think we have four or five kids now signed up um, for youth activities with us, but I think only two of them will be able to go to Browning. So I'd like to take to, like 10, up to 12 is what I can take. So if you know of anybody, please send them my way. Um, else? When's that survey coming up? Did you know that for sure? She didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. I haven't got anything back. I know no. that it wasn't a thing. In the June is when I wanted to start. Okay. Yeah. And it'll be coming from the University of Nebraska. Yeah. And we're hoping that we can start us off a little bit. Just because I know the summertime is a busy, busy, busy time for most people in Montana, especially because that's why everybody's outside. So hopefully we can push that back just a little bit into the fall or winter so that more people are around their phones. And I have a, um, I have a Facebook page. Um, it's under Little Shell Tobacco Prevention Program, I think. I'm sure that's it. Um, and I put updates and things on there. So if anybody ever needs to get a hold of me, check me out on Facebook. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, mine's pretty short. <laughs> we uh, had an art contest. We're trying to get kids involved in doing uh, things other than drinking and drugs. And um, we did have um, some kids that uh, signed up, but they weren't little show children. They were Native American. Um, and we are having a hard time finding kids between 11 and 14 that are little show. So if you know of any of these kids, let us know because this is a, a, there's so many activities that they can do that won't cost them anything. Uh, we have funding to do things with them to keep them active. Uh, one of the things is we're going to partner with Katie and Gord Browning, and uh, that should be a fun time because they have a lot of activities planned. I, I didn't get in on the last conference call, but. Uh, they were talking about hikes and astronomy and horse riding and uh, native plant identification and a, a lot of things that are uh, you know, native things that we should know. Anyway, uh, that's one of the things. Uh, Tony Prairie uh, Bear from uh, Northern Cheyenne he is also in the uh, wellness program and his part of the wellness program is to interview elders. So he wants to set up a time to come and interview some elders. So if you're willing to visit with him, let me know. Uh, 
he will be paying each elder $25. There's a giveaway things that he's going to have. There's going to be hats and shirts and vests and, and different items. And he asked me to do um, an elder logo. So I did, I haven't had it approved by the council yet, but it's just a background of uh, a burgundy uh, is what I had on the computer, but it could be any color. And then I took a picture of a, what do you call it, feather, honor feather that was given to me by the uh, Landry family and put that on, on the front of this uh, rectangular uh, background. And then uh, on the top, in, in curved letters, I have a little shelf, Elder, um, Little Shell Tribe Elders. And then on the bottom, it has Rocky Mountain Tribal Wellness Initiative and then the uh, uh, Montana Wyoming Tribal Leaders Council. So it really says who it is and, and, and what it is. So each one of these uh, logos, or this, whoever, each tribe is doing a different logo. So ours will be, if it's approved by them and by our council, will be on these items that are going to be given away. So it's uh, what, and, and the basic of this uh, interview is to find out if the programs that we're working on have had any impact at all with our tribe. So uh, the more people we can get involved in these, the better off we are in future funding. Um, yeah, I think that's all. I have a suggestion, Daryl. Yes. Uh, one of the things you might consider, especially since school's uh, just about out, is maybe sending a, a letter to the Butte, uh, Helena, Hayes uh, high schools and junior highs uh, that those historically have always had a high little shell population in those areas and uh, and you can advertise uh, what you're doing uh, through the Indian Ed coordinators or the Indian club or uh, the Indian alliances that are in each of those cities yeah uh, the transportation is our biggest problem with that at this point Richard whereas if we could get them to Great Falls Katie's going to rent a van and uh, you know that some of those schools might pay for some of that function through their Indian Ed programs to help you out with that. Uh, one and other we thing did to talk to the Indian Ed uh, here in Great Falls. Outstanding. And what we did talk with the, uh, what's that group called, the parents? But they have a monthly meeting anyway. Okay. The Native American Club's parents come I, to this I, meeting. I don't, I don't think that's what they call it, but it's similar. And uh, we were able to get a couple of kids in, involved through them. Also, uh, <coughs> both Rocky Boy and uh, Fort Belknap have tribal radio stations. Uh, Rocky Boy is KHEW 88.5, and uh, 89.1 is in Fort Belknap. Uh, they would do PSAs for next to three uh, to promote any events. Sounds so good. I just wanted to give, give you a little help. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. We can use all the help we can get. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. All right, moving on. Well, old business, we have the visitor center update. So um, we got all that. Um, now we'll open the floor if we have any public comments, questions or comments. I mean, I guess next time we need to have a feed of some kind to get more people. <laughs> I have a comment. <laughs> okay. I want to thank all the council members for all the hard work that they're putting in. And people like Joe who are volunteering. Uh, Joe over there and Brian and all the ones that are helping out. I, I really appreciate it as a tribal member. Oh, I that. I'd like to add Denny Flesh on that today. Thank you, Denny, for coming in and recording uh, uh, since Fran is in Kentucky. Appreciate that. Well, I can give a, a kind of a, a update on the Pemina money thing, or the lawsuit. Four of us went, Leona, Luella, myself, and Clarence went to North Dakota. Um, what I could, it's still being negotiated between NARF and uh, by the plaintiffs and the government. That. Talking about monies, did anything ever happen about the funds that were set aside for our tribal government that they're holding? Yeah, that that's uh, it's in Albuquerque, mm -hmm. Office of Trust. It's, uh, I think right now it's around four million dollars. Is it really? Um, 
we can only touch that once we get federally recognized. And I was we can, there was a loophole. And I we looked. And there's only you can only access twenty percent of that. Twenty percent of the interest per year. Twenty percent of the interest? Yes. Trying to get this money that's just sitting here. Well, I've tried. With Dell Lavenger when he was uh, in the Department of Interior, and with Troy, there's just no way. Because it was a, it's a law. And then if we don't get recognized, then all that money will be dispersed to members. To the members? Yeah. With a, like a per cap payment. So. That. Yes, sir. Um, how do I say this? Um, the thing, the thing that, like, the thing that I think about a lot is direction, right? And what I keep hearing with the different programs, different things, is that there's a lack of marketing. The marketing isn't there. Okay, the attention and stuff. Um, I'm into music too, and I do. I know, I know, graphic design artists that. You know, they go all out on their posters and different things. And I've been um, with a lot of different record labels in Montana. One of them is Wapakia Records out of Missoula. Um, they're, they're the only independent record label in the Northwest. They have everything, everything. They have a green screen. They have the video technology. They have a whole brand new stage with the speakers and the lights and the mics and everything like that. Um, I'm not signed with nobody, although I do have access to those kind of things. You know, on a, on a, on a business level, but a friend level with the guy to where I can get their help for little. You mean for, for less money, for less whatever. Um, and that's the other thing where I'm kind of leading into. I touched before that I, that I make music. I write it, I make it, I perform it. I do, I know for a lot of elders in here, nobody likes hip hop or rap music, you know? Um, but to me, that's kind of the direction we need to, like I need to take for my small personal business because it's the kids, the youth, they're the ones who are gonna bring it all. You know, so that's where my target, that's why the cheap and design and the hoodies and the different look, designs that I have, that's why I've designed them that way. Kind of more urban type of thing, you know, um, but it's to bring that attention because I don't see a whole lot of younger generation here. And I have it, you know, the last couple of things I've been with the tribe. And that's kind of like my own like a little dream, you know what I mean, is to try to help and bring some of, something to the younger generation. Because if we don't work on them, how are we gonna how are we gonna rise? How is that unity gonna come? You know what I mean? We need to keep putting those poles on our teepee. We can't keep taking the poles away because it's gonna get weaker. Right. You know, so right. like if there's anything I can do as in like um the powwow, like I like with the uh, the music, like I could bring people here. I can get people here for free. That's what we okay? need. I can get people here. <laughs> That's we what we need. That shows, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I can get, I can get the poster designed. I can do all the marketing myself and get it all out here. I have access to the 406 club. I know the owners. I can do a show up there anytime I want, anytime I want for free. And I could, I charge at the door. That's the money that I make, right? Why even charge? Why not just have a free show? Why not just get them here? Just try to get it here. Get them on the radio at different places. You know what I mean? And get things moving. Spark things. Get things you know, where they need to be, I think. And that's kind of the thing with, with my clothes and my designs and everything. That's what I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to bring it all together, but I think there's that youth component that's missing. You know, so I mean, that, that's just my opinion. I, mean, I just kind of wanted you guys to know where I'm at, and there's a lot of avenues I can take and do bringing for the time on different levels. You know, but I am here if anybody needs my help or opinion or ideas, whatever. I appreciate that. Thank you. How do we get a hold of you? 
Uh, my phone number. I give you my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> phone number? It's 453-0259. So yeah, anything I can do, like if you need help, like with the flyers or anything, like I have all the programs, I have the printers, I have it all. Like I got embroidery machines coming. I got a lot of different things going on. So I'm in. Well, you need to get with Joel. Joel? Yeah. yeah. Well, my question was, I'm getting a lot of phone calls from people. Uh, from Denver, you know, Colorado area, and up in Kalispell and around. And they're, they're asking you for for information about the little shelf drive, and who to contact, and and where do they need to go. I don't know how they're getting my number because I don't know these people. But I know them after I talk to them. So where do I direct them? What are they looking at? Just information? For information. Call the office, and then you can what's, have them buy the book. Between one and four. Call yeah, well, and that's, that's that. just it because you know, they say, well, how do I get a hold of someone, or what do they do, or, you know, do I direct them to the council, do I direct them to the, where do I send I, I, I told the last one, I said, they used to trying to get a hold of some people, because they had to check on someone in this room, and I said, well, I don't know, go to the littleshowtribe.us. Mm -hmm. Chairman, could we, I don't know. Could we give uh, some of the committees a, a list of uh, the tribal council's phone numbers? Sure. So it could be so I mean, people like that. Uh, you'll have a list that you can give them. And maybe have them what, on Facebook so. or what their duties are, so that they I can say, okay, this guy is in charge. Of, like, what does Donnie do? What's he in charge of? You know, that information on where it's at or it's out here. Or? So you mean specific information going to? Well, because people are saying, who do I call? Who do I get to contact with? Who I, I need. Uh, I need help with my business. I, I want to get a business loan. Well, see, that's where they call the tribal office, and that, you know, it's specifically to whatever their needs may be, whether it's uh, enrollment or something. That's and then the her. tribal office will direct them. Yeah, mm -hmm. if they leave their name and number, I always get back to them within that day. So if I can help them, I'll definitely call them one way or another. What is but the tribal office phone number? Three one five. There's twenty three ninety nine and twenty four hundred. Three one five two three nine nine yeah. and three one five two four zero zero. And those I said it was a uh, answer machine. Or? Yeah, there he is. There he is. Speak to a live person from one to four. Yeah. There's a fax <laughs> machine also. Yep, yeah. it's there at two four zero one. Two four zero one is the fax. Thank you. Okay. Carol. Well, one of the things that uh, kind of popped into my brain while I was sitting here was. The reason that we're having trouble getting youth, little shell youth involved, is because so many of our youth are not enrolled. And because they're not, the reason they're not enrolled is because, like my grandchildren, they don't meet the blood quantum. So I think someday in the near future or whatever, I think the council needs to discuss uh, maybe eliminating a blood quantum and change it to a descendancy because I know so many, so many little shell people that their grandchildren aren't in uh, oh. yeah, that's something, something to think about. <laughs> well, oh, you're right. Yeah. It is. Yeah. My kids. And, and a lot of our elders are dying. Yeah. <laughs> Joel also, um, in the, the near future, end of our, um, she right. had that I mean, the brochure. You know, we'll I have that cultural center right. by end of June. They'll be able to go in there and all the displays. Right. We're That's having Nicholas and Brenda put them together with photos. We'll have Brenda's coming up to do a whole archive section up there. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. people can go there if they want specific mm -hmm. real shell information. Mm -hmm. so that'll if they're traveling to this area. Right. But if they're just from out of state and they need something, I mean, we can try to help them maybe by getting them a, um, you know, a copy of whatever they, it depends what they need. You can yeah. always call too. That's what I mean. From out of state, they can call the center. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and the center has a phone number too. If there's someone there. From, yeah. Well, we're <laughs> going to get some, we have to get someone there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. it's, 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 the, it, we have to do it because that's uh, ice money. Tied away so. right. 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 Yeah. Um, constitutional ways. When are we going to address that? You know that I'm trying to. Troy took a new job with the Department of Interior, so we're, we're just working with Donna now, and we have to make sure that her schedule coincides with what we can do. It'll have to be, you know, 
in the near future too. Right? And it, you know, I mean, if we have this many members show up to a constitutional convention, and then we're going to have, you know, we need, we need to have participation. So mm -hmm. we have to figure this out. Well. Or you can eat food. We need eleven o'clock <laughs> meetings. <laughs> okay. yes. Ten o'clock, yeah. eleven for lunch, eleven to three, and then we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Advertising. Yeah. When we have money. Right. We don't have the money for the advertising. Yeah. They always show up for free food, though. Yes, yeah. they do. Always. Yes, they do. Publics are always handy. Yeah. Well, with that, any more comments from anybody? Comments, suggestions? So have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming. Teddy, um, can you take pictures of Brian's stuff over here? Is there any way you can tell Oh, wagon wheel. Oh, wagon wheel. Wow. Yeah. Bar wire from the hill. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, everything. Got a medicine wheel in the center. Yeah. You know, with the red road and the black road. Uh huh. You know, with the little rock. Right. Yeah. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. It's real pretty when you turn it on.